I'm David Hunt and welcome to The Art Hunter. My guest today is an art lover, champions the arts. Uh, he was a curator, still is I suppose, a businessman, gallery owner, etc. because there's so much to, to, to this man. Relocated from Brisbane, yay, we've got him here in Melbourne now. Uh, he completed a master in tax uh, at um, university and down the track he's opened this gallery here in Melbourne called Fox Gallery, funny enough it's his surname as well, in 2016. He established and believes in uh, the vibrant cultural uh, sector and he has fought for fair representation for artists, but both visually and you know, like all across the arts, uh, and you know, like helping him with superannuation, which is, this is why I wanted to talk to him today, apart from the fact he's a hell of a nice guy, is what he's doing for the arts is just so, so wonderful and so important. So Michael Fox, hello. Oh, hello David. And and look, and thank you for what you do for the arts. I think it's, um, uh, you know, like it's, it's so nice to see somebody like you, a, a businessman, a, a, you know, an accountant, mm. uh, supporting the arts like you do. Oh, well, it's always been part of my life. So I grew up, my mother was a painter, and ah. my, my, my first love was really the arts more than anything else. So I'd, I never thought in my life I'd ever become an accountant. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I originally went down that path. I, that was my first qualification, I suppose. Yeah. But I always... Uh, wanted to be involved in some way. And, uh, you know, many years later, I find that I've somehow managed to do the two at the same time. Yeah. You know? So you in Brisbane and you had a, there was a gallery that you were involved in up there. Why did you move to Melbourne from Brisbane? Well, I found myself um, in Brisbane, which was originally Fox Galleries as well. Yeah. Uh, that I was doing a lot of, um, you know, connecting with people around the country. And in particular, I was uh, connecting with, uh, uh, Kosminski Gallery here in Melbourne, which is really quite a famous gallery, and we seem to get on quite well. And uh, I guess, uh, you know, running a gallery is, is a lot of hard work. Yeah. Uh, so Fox Gallery's version one ran for about eight years or so, actually. Yeah. Um, and I sort of got to the point where I was actually looking for new, for new challenges. And just out of the blue, um, I was approached to to run the auction house of uh, Leonard Joel, which is they were, they, they, at that stage they were they were trying to run a higher end auction house, which was trying, going to compete against Sotheby's and Christie's and all wow. the other big auction wow. houses. And so I decided to do that. So so I ran the the auction operation for Queensland for for Leonard Joel for a number of years. And and through that I met uh, quite a, a lot of people that you know I still would consider friends and colleagues. Yeah. And, Eventually, I decided to come down this way. Right. Mm. But, you know, like, Michael, uh, the story is mm. just so mm. wonderful. Yeah. But why, why um, tax? Why an accountant? What, what, yeah. what was the, you know, like, after all those years in the gallery mm. world? Mm. Well, it's probably the other way around in a way because I was, I was involved in tax first. And oh, then, okay. And, okay. Then, and then I was involved in, in, the, in the gallery side. But there have been periods of my life where actually I haven't had been involved in in tax at all, and in fact, that really that was my that was my plan was was to to just move entirely into the into the art sector. Yeah. Uh, but I found the the global financial uh, crisis that occurred all those years ago um, sort of uh, somewhat um, put a dampener on those yeah. plans. But it, it and was... I sort of found, but you know, like I I used to find it very tiring actually uh, using both sides of my. Oh, my brain, yeah. because they are very different activities. Mm, yep. You know, so going back all those years when I started, I would, you know, if someone came in to me and I was talking to them about tax, and then next thing that happened, someone would walk in and talk to me about a painting, I would need to lie down at the end of the day because I would go, oh God, this is just so much yeah. to absorb. But wow. I kind of found over a period of time, and you could sort of train yourself that I could do this quite readily. Yeah. I didn't really have that when I was a little younger. Yeah. You know? so, yeah. ma so maybe that could be the answer. Yeah. Uh, and you took it to the full, full throttle, as in you, know, mm. you went back and studied. Uh, and mm. so when was the moment you thought, OK, now it's time to open the gallery here? In Melbourne, I think what I wanted to do was I wanted to, to learn more about uh, the taxation of the visual arts 
and uh, the masters that I did at Melbourne Law School gave me the opportunity. So I've, I wrote a paper, uh, which you know that that paper has been presented to federal government, etc. Whoa! About how to reform the, the taxation of the arts. What for the, for the arts? And that that's how you've now got superannuation go, happening for yeah, the... Well, the the actual the original uh, fight over superannuation for the arts happened before then. And I, when, when I was running that campaign, uh, which was called Save Super Art. Um, I was the campaign manager. I was working for a, a firm here doing that. Uh, when when I, it occurred to me, even though we were very successful, eventually we we, we kind of won, although we didn't entirely win. Yeah. Um, it occurred to me that, gee, I really need to know more about how this entire system works. And yeah. So then I did a deep dive into the into the tax act. Yeah. Yeah. Now for for our viewers, you know, like uh, are artists mm. very savvy when it comes to doing their taxes, you know, being business people as well. Um, I, I know the answer. Well, it's 50-50 actually, David. Oh, is it? Oh, I thought it would have been about because you 85. Have, you have some artists that are just business people. Okay. You know, and it's almost like they've just been able to work it out. And there's, a, there's an artist I look after in, in, in um, Brisbane, and he just said to me, I don't know why, because he actually doesn't really judge himself as a very good painter, but he's got um, a real following. Um, and he just said, for some reason, it's like, I just know how to create money. <laughs> and I don't know why. <laughs> but there are also other artists that we look after who, who really literally bring in the shoebox still. <laughs> yeah, but, fantastic. And, but the, the good thing is, it's not just visual arts. You, you actually are performing mm. arts, as in musicians, because mm. a, a bit of a background. And you said off camera that you actually... Um, uh, look after people that are uh, roadies as well. Yeah, it's a pretty broad church, the, uh, the practice. Um, so we look after, well, the, the, the accounting practice, yeah, we look after musicians and we look after people in film and TV and radio and people in, you know, support uh, services as well. But, yeah, I, you know, like in, in Brisbane, had a pretty vibrant music scene and I, I'm a bit of a product of that in a way. Yeah. And, you know, like, a lot of great bands came out of oh, at Brisbane. Oh, absolutely, and, yeah. You know, and we, the first version of the gallery, we, we regularly had music events. Okay. I think I was saying before that we had a bit of a, you know, uh, sort of like semi-legal type of um, event every weekend where, because my, my, my first gallery there was at the back of a, was inside a, um, a, um, a, sky, a sky, skyscraper, high rise. Yeah, yeah. And at the back was, was, was meant to be a fire escape, but you know, Anyway, so it was, <laughs> but we set up the DJ there. Yeah. So it was really only the DJ out there and people would just go out for a smoke or whatever. Yeah. And the music would just like reverberate around the inner city. And so people would be walking around, they wouldn't know where this music was coming from. It was quite funny. <laughs> but it was like a private event. And yeah. 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 So uh, it's a tough time right now for, for visual artists mm. because, you know, like, uh, with what's going on with uh, the interest rates and whatever. How was it during COVID, though? So that's actually probably the last time we really spoke in depth because I remember taking a call from you and doing an interview over the phone and it just looked like the world was going to end. So COVID was kind of like a, a, like a almost like a three-part story, <laughs> if you like. So the first part was... We don't know what's going to happen. It just looked like everyone was going to live, lose their livelihoods. And then all of a sudden, all this economic support came in. And so the first year, which was 2020, um, I think that we kind of just struggled through. We sort of made it through. Yeah. The second um, year, 2021, particularly in Melbourne with our long shutdown, yeah. it was kind of like, well, we're just going to be at home and we're just going to have a good time and we're just going to make this work for us. So a lot of people decided to purchase artworks. And so we had a, a lot of a lot of sales like online through Instagram. People yeah. just rang up. My, my gallery actually, I was quite lucky because I've got windows yeah. um, along Wellington Street. So we would even have people call up and say, "Well, look, I'm in the five kilometre radius. <laughs> so I'm going to drive past. Can you put a painting up in, in in your windows? Oh wow! And we'll tell you whether we want to buy it or not. Whoa! And we sold a lot of paintings that way. Whoa. Believe it or not. Yeah. How how interesting! And now mm. you know, like we've come out of that, and the mm. gallery's open as normal. And this interest rate thing would be knocking your the gallery around a bit. Yeah. So this is the third part of the story, I yeah. guess, which is what we're going through right now. Yeah. Uh, and I think that uh, there was a lot of stimulus money pumped into the economy, and we're kind of like coming off that cliff now. 
Um, it was like apparent six months ago that this was going to happen, and I think that from now to the end of the year, we'll really tell exactly how we're going to go. Yeah. But, you know, the arts is very um, vulnerable to mm. economic stimulus, to tax yeah. policies, yep. et cetera. Yeah. Yeah. So the budget we'll see in a couple of weeks, but um, one of the things that will end, I'm pretty sure, is the instant asset write-off and on the 30th of June. So um, a lot of uh, people in the arts weren't really aware that if you buy painting, for example, you can claim it on your tax if you're in business. I thought that, that finished. You know, is it? No, it hadn't. No, 30, oh. 30th of June. But what you have to do is not only buy the painting, but you also have to install it. Ah. Or rather, sculpture as well. So we're yeah. just not talking about painters. <laughs> um, so um, that is most likely going to, going to finish. Right. And it had been, this measure had been really turbocharged during COVID. In fact, there was no really upper, upper limit to it. And so, you know, I've, I've had calls from plastic surgeons, for example, saying, oh, I want to go to auction and buy a $150,000 painting to put in my, uh, my, my surgery waiting room. Yeah. And it's like, sure, you can claim that as a deduction <laughs> if you want. Fantastic. Yeah. And, um, well, it must be really good with somebody like yourself, you know, like mm. being an accountant, is that you can give that to a buyer and also to your artist going, well, look, this is what you can do. That's right. That's right. So I guess uh, if they're talking to me, it, it's coming from literally the horse's mouth. Yeah. But a lot of my articles have been, um, you know, widely distributed. So, uh, the, you know, the information that I have, I'm, 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 I don't mind sort of, you know, like letting people know. Yeah. So a lot of galleries around the country actually use my information to, to sell artworks that way. Wow. Yeah. Um, you must be pretty proud of yourself, what you're doing, Michael. You know, like you're a very humble person, mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, like you've uh, achieved extraordinary stuff, haven't you? Yeah, it's been a bit of a journey. <laughs> so, I mean, I, I was sort of thinking, you know, that uh, initially, um, you know, as, a, as an, an accountant that also had a gallery, quite often I had accountant clients who would say, um, oh, I actually need to go to a real accountant. You know, oh. because I'm sort of involved in the in the arts, and it was right. a bit, maybe that's a Brisbane thing. I'm not sure. Yeah. But and 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 uh, then conversely, the other thing is like uh, running a gallery, and then it's like, um, oh, you're only doing it because you're an accountant and you're interested in money. So I think that I mean, over time, I think it's become apparent that uh, you know, like I'm doing it for the right reasons. So, yes. Yeah. 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 Well, I think you've got the reputation now, haven't you? Uh, I you know, believe like, so. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so how many artists do you represent at, because a gallery, a, a lot of people mm. might not know this, a, mm. a nice story to tell. Uh, a gallery actually has their stable of artists. Is that right? That's right. It's a funny term, isn't it? I mean, it makes you think of racehorses, <laughs> but um, no, about 20, about 20. Some, some, some galleries kind of like, um, it's almost like they're accumulating them and collecting them. <laughs> and, and, you know, there are some galleries that have like far more than 20, but I think 20 is a good number to kind of like manage. And does it drop off at all? You know, does, is there artists that might not do anything for five years and you go, oh, hold on, I think we need to move away from you and, and bring in somebody else? Yeah, the, I think the, the choice about exhibition, it's very important for a gallery not to kind of like put or overexpose the artist. Um, I mean, I think you have to do that in the early stage. So it's important to have like show, show, show. Yep. But then as, as you build up a uh, client base for those artists, you might just pull it back a little bit. Uh -huh. And the other part that the gallery is heavily involved in is commissioning as well, which is what all galleries should do. Yeah. So those sort of commissioning activities um, sort of build up profile. Yeah. And an example off that would be we look after a ceramic artist called uh, Tim Clarkson. Oh, over my shoulder? Uh, actually, he's not one of your images, right. I'm afraid. Um, hey, but hey, sorry. Anyway, but that, that might be uh, something we could have. I'll, I'll, you know, he, he does these origami type of um, oh, sculptures. right. Um, and uh, they're really incredible porcelain, beautiful glaze. And, uh, you know, during COVID, we were approached by uh, St. Hubert's Winery um, in the Yarra Valley. They're yeah. doing this big refit. And they wanted a sculpture of um, stag, because that's their logo. That's their so so Tim made this two metre massive um, sculpture of a stag, and we get a lot of people who contact us because they say, "Oh, I went to St They've Hubert's, yeah. and wow, you know." It, it must be interesting, you know, like out of the blue, at something, mm. you know, like uh, that they approach you, you know, like we mm. want a sculpture, and and then uh, the. 
what what you get from it after it, you know. And then there are other times mm. where you think to yourself, oh, we're going to get a lot of business from that, and nothing happens. Yeah, and I've never really thought, um, or I've never even tried to to think about what the logic. business is coming down <laughs> the, you know, because I, I just have a theory that you have to keep, have to keep busy. The busier you are, the more likely that things will happen and they'll fall in your in your place. In, yeah. in your favour. Yeah. yeah. And do you spend much time at the gallery? You know, like, is your office somewhere nearby or...? Uh, yeah, my office is, uh, is is actually, like, almost inside the gallery hey. in a way. So, hey. so the way that we, ha we have it structured is that we have a gallery gallery, which is uh, where exhibitions are held, and then we have also a stockroom space where people could walk in um, you know, and, and, and but at the moment that, that's actually been taken over by artists because I started an artist in residence thing recently. And the middle space is actually where the accountants work. Yeah. And where they work is they're, they're surrounded by paintings from the gallery anyway. Yeah. And quite yeah. often people walk into that accounting office and they buy artworks and they, they don't really care that people are just walking, working away on their, on their computers. They just, you know. Yeah. yeah. Well, but it's a nice, you know, because sometimes it can be a little bit sort of, oh, I don't, I don't want to walk into mm. a gallery. I don't want to do this because, you know, the, you get a bit intimidated. Where, yeah. where if there's people working mm. away, you know, like in a different role, then mm. I think that's good in itself, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. I mean, um, you know, the, the whole thing with the gallery is that, you know, it's all this concept of a cube, isn't it? Yep. And so, you know, I always remember that absolutely fabulous episode where um, Edwina and uh, Patsy Cohen and they're, they're sort of stumbling through this installation and, and they just turn to the attendant and she goes, oh, look, you're just a shop assistant, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I, think we, I think we should really, you know, I mean, we have to be respectful yep. of, the, of the artist, but we also just need to not, like, take it so seriously. Yeah. Oh, yeah. A a absolutely. Mm -hmm. So, you know, like, you must have seen so many trends over the years, you know, like, mm -hmm. with, with styles of art and all that. Um, you know, like, can you predict at all, you know, where it might be going next? You know, like, I don't mean tomorrow, mm -hmm. but have you seen it where you've gone, mm, that artist, I think, could be an interesting one for us to, to keep an eye on? You mean, like, if you go to the supermarket and you see a lot of um, coconut yogurt and you go, why is everybody eating coconut yogurt all of a sudden? <laughs> um, yeah, it's very kind of difficult. I mean, I think that actually more and more what's happened because of social media is that it's becoming probably a little bit more difficult to predict it because everyone, there's a lot of conformity now that there wasn't so many years ago. And I think that's been the big change that I've noticed because I had Gallery 1, 10 year break between Gallery 2. Yeah. And Gallery 2 is a different beast to Gallery 1. Yeah. So I find that, you know, it's more, you sort of look at what's happening and uh, at one stage there was a lot of uh, photorealistic work that was there um, that doesn't seem to be such a thing anymore. Right. And what about ceramics? You know, how, how's that going? Are, are people enjoying that more these days? And Ceramic is a very difficult market, actually. Yeah. Because um, you've got to... Well, any, any sc sculpture is a difficult market, and I've always enjoyed sculpture, but a lot of people just don't get it. Mm. A lot of people just don't kind of engage with sculpture um, the way they do a painting. Why, why is that, Michael? What, what, why do you think that happens? Because we've had a few sculptors on, on this show and, um, and, you're like, and you, the, the amount of... Because they've got to have a lot of space mm. if they do big work and so therefore you know, like they're not just painting in their, mm. their uh, spare bedroom or whatever and they've got to transport it and, you, know, like, and you can't really um, uh, make a sculpture on a large scale because you mm. might not ever mm. sell it. That's right. I mean, I think, uh, well, you were talking more about bronze. I mean, ceramic is a lot friendlier oh, than, than yeah. that. But oh, it's like photographic market too. I think there is somewhat um, a bit of a, um, a notion that um, maybe that sculpture that I've bought, the artist is just going to make another 10. And so it's not as unique an object as a painting. Okay. But, but a, you know, a, a good example of, look, it's just visual language, I suppose, and a lot of people just don't have visual language, which is, as an example, with the artists in residence that I have at the moment, they're, they, they're actually, you know, painting, well, both of the artists paint on the wall, so that means they staple the canvas to the wall. Right. And they paint on the wall. Yep. And, you know, the, the first one we had last month, we, we just haven't sold any that, that way, which I found sort of surprising, but we've sold other paintings that are very similar that were already framed. Oh. And so the clients actually they, they can understand that 
and but they can't actually quite understand that that canvas that's uh, stapled to the wall, what we're going to do is we're going to take it off the wall, we're going to uh, put it on a stretcher bar and then we're going to put a frame around it. Yeah. They yeah. want to see, they just want to see the object. See the finished see product, yeah. And I think sculpture is a bit the same. Right. Uh, and also with that whole whole thing on, on the wall, if they bought it off the wall, it would be cheaper as well, wouldn't it? Well, because that's, that, that was part of my thinking, actually. <laughs> <laughs> was that because, you know, times are a little tougher as well and, uh, you know, and I wanted to make it a bit easier for the artists to not have to worry about doing all that and have to transport the works into the, into the gallery. Yeah. That I thought that that might be a talking point with, uh, with collectors. Yeah. And with our catalogues, we actually didn't have specific pricing. We just saw every every work there was just called about about this, about you know. So so yeah. it was more like trying to encourage people to to barter, but that didn't happen. Right. Okay. Yeah. That that's mm. really mm. so. Yeah. You know, like you're trying different areas, and some of mm. them don't work. What what about street art? You know, it's having so much impact now. Mm. Um, and looking around at your art that's here now and will be on on the mm. screen as well with your artists, yeah. uh, do you have any street artist or do you stay away from that world? Well, I actually was the first gallery in Australia to show street art oh. in a, in a commercial sense. Okay. Um, so I've been pretty heavily involved with it for a long period of time, but and I guess that's version one. So I. I I found it kind of interesting in Melbourne that after all that time that people are talking about it like it's a new thing, but it's been around for a very long, mm. very long time. Yeah. Um, and of course the whole thing about street art is a lot of artists don't want to actually show in galleries anyway. I mean, they're very comfortable making their, their living from doing murals and... Yeah. Yeah, so... But, but now, um, uh, and there, there's one up the road here, um, and uh, he's actually representing a lot of street artists, mm. and they're making postcards or tea towels, and instead of just somebody mm. taking a photo and mm. doing whatever they want to with it, he's you know, getting some money through the door for a lot of artists. Well, that's great. I mean, I think that that should be encouraged. Yeah. Um, but in terms of what do I th think about street art? I mean, yeah, I mean, I think ultimately the goal of it, I mean, ultimately the goal of it was really to um, provide an alternative to advertising messages, wasn't it? Mm. I think that's what, it, and it's like this subversive form yep. of art, which yep. a lot of people kind of find yeah. challenging. But again, I think, you know, there's a lot of conformity. So I think you'll find that a lot of people that click street art are probably people who've got lovely houses in Armadale, for example. So, you know, like it's quite a bit, it's kind of interesting where art actually ends up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And that would be really interesting for a, a curator and a gallery owner is where art ends up when you, you know, like, mm. do you ever take it off the wall and, and take it to the, uh, uh, the client's place? Yeah, we quite often do. We quite often do, so. And hang it for them and? Yeah, um, we do. I mean, it depends on the difficulty of doing that. But yeah, we either we do it or we can um, organise you know, it and store yeah, it to do yeah. that. And are you surprised sometimes where you know, if you walked into somebody's house and you go, I wouldn't have picked them as an art lover, you know, like I just mm. wouldn't have picked it because you, you know, like there's stories about uh, back in the mm. '60s and '70s in New York where mm. a postman was a, a collector, him and his wife, and they they ended mm. up with they had millions of dollars in art by the time they were old people. That's right. Yeah, I, f I find I find people who collect art it tells a story about their life. It's quite interesting, and that's like probably wearing my valuer hat because I'm a valuer as well as a so that's another side that I do too. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, I recently um, did evaluation for a retired diplomat and he was the Australian High Commissioner to India in the 1970s and he had all sorts of really interesting objects there. And, uh, you know, he had a, a drawing from an um, Indian artist that depicted uh, Gough Whitlam, for example. Um, you know, so quite historic yeah. as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so you, you find, you find I think that's what people really love about collecting art, yeah. is it's sort of like it's a connection to, to their life story. Yeah. What, what about uh, younger people uh, where, you know, they want to get into buying art? Mm. Uh, you know, like there's that hard not knowing, you know, where to start, what to buy to begin with. Do you have mm. any, any um, thoughts on that to pass on to? Well, I think you always should like the art that you buy. So if you're sort of just buying for investment and a lot of people do, yeah, I mean, I think, I think you should really probably start with um, advice, um, you know, seek out, um, you know, 
galleries that you might find, um, you know, welcoming, talk yep. to you. Yep. Um, yeah, I think that, um, yeah, I, I, I think that you should start just collecting. I guess I, I did myself. I mean, that's sort of how I, I got into it. Um, and then you sort of discover as you're going along, it's a, lo it's a lot of trial and error. It's a lot of trial and error. Yeah. And I, th I think in today's age, a lot of people don't like making mistakes. It's almost like you get piled on if you make a mistake. <laughs> so if you, you buy an artwork and then you find out, you know, that you don't like it or, or, or your friends come over and they hate it and, you know. We sold, we sold a, a very large painting by Victor Rubin, who's a more senior artist, um, to this guy who owned a cleaning company some years ago. And, uh, and he, he wanted to make a film about it. He was so excited. We hung it in his boardroom. And, and, and everyone that worked there hated it. <laughs> no. They hated it. Wow, wow. Yeah. Because um, that was going to be one of my questions, is that, you know, like when somebody's in a gallery and you're mm. sometimes overhearing their conversation, mm. uh, you know, like art is in the eye of the beholder. Mm. It's, um, you know, somebody obviously liked it to paint it in the first mm. place. Um, you, you as a gallery, you know, you know, curated it to be in your mm. gallery. Uh, but... Is there times where you, you stand there and go, mm, nah, and you're like, that's not very good? Oh, you mean like other people's uh, art? Mm. Yeah, I tend to keep my opinions to myself, though. I mean, um, but yes, I mean, um, I guess I've been in this game for, for quite a while, so I've got my own ideas about what I, what I think is, is good. I think also um, uh, the actual way that art is created, I think that people should get more into that discussion which is pr probably, you know, with the artists in residence, that's also part of my motivation there was to more yep. to have a discussion about this because yep. there's a lot of um, techniques, I guess, that a lot of modern artists use nowadays that <coughs> a lot of collectors might not be aware of. Yeah. So, hmm. I, I find that, um, you know, like, it, there might be a, a piece that I look at and I go, oh, no, nah, I don't really mm. like it. But if I talk to a curator or the mm. artist and they explain a, mm. a different side of it, mm. I'm often won over, you know, like, yeah. and, and it's that whole thing of mm. not really, you know, I obviously don't have that, that mm. eye sometimes to understand where the journey that's gone on. Yeah, that's right. Um, and a, a, a good sign of, a, of an artwork that's successful is one that you can live with happily because, um, I guess, work that's not kind of resolved, probably one way of describing it. Yeah. Uh, to me, anyway, it's quite obvious after a while, it kind of annoys me being around artworks that aren't finished or you're just like, what is the artist thinking about? Why didn't they do, you know, like, yeah. where's this coming from? So a lot of the art that I'm drawn to uh, has, um, you know, I guess what you might describe as concept, um, behind it anyway like you and consistency yeah. i think that's also very important um you know there's this whole thing oh artists are kind of all a bit unstable and the work they produce is you know different from year to year but yeah. actually most artists produce fairly consistent bodies of work over yeah. long periods yeah. of time yeah. and and you see their development which is the wonderful side of it as mm. well isn't it um is there one, you, you were talking about collecting mm. art for, for many, many years yourself. Mm. Is there one piece from way back in the, those early days that you still look and think, I'm so pleased I've got that? Yeah, I think uh, early on I was a big fan of Arthur Boyd. Oh, so, excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, there was a, an auction that was held. Um, there were, you know, Brisbane had a, a very interesting gallery called Johnson Galleries, in the, which was the equivalent of any gallery in the country, and they... When, the, when, the, when they passed the, the owners, uh, there was a, a, an amazing auction that was held there. And I just went along and I just got two um, uh, uh, etchings from, from, the, from that estate. And uh, yeah, they were just amazing. Wow, so, and you got them at a good price, did you? Or? Yeah, I, I did actually. Wow. But I mean, I think that that was just one of those things where I probably didn't quite know exactly what I was doing at the time, but, yeah. it, but it worked out. But, yeah, quite, quite often with, um, you know, buying work, you just have to sort of go with your, with your gut somewhat. Mm. And, uh, you know, a lot of people, you know, they, they uh, would, would say, um, I, I wish I had bought that painting. Have you heard that? Oh, and it happens. I, yeah, me, so I've said I, it. I think, you know, I don't think life is full of, you shouldn't have regrets like that. <laughs> I think that, and you sort of know anyway, a lot of people would know that they should, 
you know, if, if it, you know, I mean, it, it helps the artists. Um, you're then part of the narrative of their of what's happening with their career. Yep, yep. So, and you often build up a, a friendship with the artist too, don't you? You do. Y if you, you get do. to meet the artist, you yeah. do. Or the gallery in in particular. Uh, mm -hmm. Where where are those two pieces? Are, are they somewhere really important in your home or in your office? Well, I, I'd, I'd hate to s disappoint you, but actually they're they're in storage. Hey, at the moment. no, they're, no, my, my, drag them out. That's right. My my, my my partner she always says to me uh, where we live. This is not an art gallery, so we have to have a restriction uh, on how many uh, how many works okay, so I can okay. hang at one stage. All right, so you need a, another gallery just to put your art, and you can just wander through it whenever you like. That's what some collectors do. Actually, they they end up with so much art that they actually almost create a museum. Yep. Um, yeah. And and in fact, in Melbourne, there's been a few like that. Yeah, actually, there, there is. They literally have become museums. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Michael, thank you so much for coming on today, but. Also, I wanted to, you on to thank you for what you're doing for the arts. Um, you're a champion of the arts and I really admire and thank you for what you do. Thank you, David. It's a pleasure to be here today. Thank you. Well, thanks for watching. He's famous, I'm not. Uh, and we'll be back again next week. See ya. <laughs>